Namaste everyone. Welcome to our Cherry Yoga online class. My name is Victoria Brunassi from Synergy Yoga and uh, today we're going to be doing the whole class in a chair. Um, this is a very good modality for seniors, beginners, people that had some type of serious injury, maybe like in a car accident and has some short mobility in the beginning, maybe someone that is extremely obese perhaps and is working with that and also for corporate yoga if you definitely spend lots of hours in a chair in an office this would be a great way for you to unwind yourself and be able to continue your day happy and free of stress so we're going to use a yoga mat a sticky mat and then we have a chair i'm going to sit on the edge of the chair if you don't have a block just be sure your feet in this case are hips width apart and we're really going to focus on grounding the soles of the feet if you do have a block you can put it between your tights and that will just give a sensation of engagement then hastadasana we're going to tuck the tailbone in and the belly in you can relax the hands on top of your knees uh, you can adopt the mudra if you like so maybe mudra of contemplation if you're female left hand on top of the right connecting the thumbs like this <laughs> If you're a male, you're going to put your right hand on top of your left. And we always, always start with some breathing. So, again, sitting on the very edge of the chair. Because if you sit too much here, then you kind of like fall back. And we want you to keep your back lengthening. Now, if you feel like you are bringing your shoulders forward and you're having already a hard time, um, doing that just bring the hands behind on the chair and with the tip of your fingers lift your own chest your own heart okay don't forget to tuck the tailbone and the belly in and now we can start closing the eyes and again just taking a few deep breaths here we're going to do the class in not very long breaths today just for uh, the time but when you are teaching this class or when you're practicing this class please feel welcome to take more than five breaths if possible okay so the breath that we're using is ujjayi deep inhale and deep exhale the breath is through the nose. Long and deep, engaging the internal bandhas, lifting the pelvic floor, belly in, chin to the chest. So keeping the heart lifting and open, Slowly bring the hands into the heart center. Don't collapse the chest or the shoulders. And we always create a positive intention. That's how we always start. Combining the five bodies, entering your heart, soul, body. As you create an intention to the universe, and again, it can be anything that you like. Maybe some project that you need to work on. Maybe you want to send some love and energy to someone else or maybe a cause in the world. As I start with one mantra Om to make the space sacred. Inhaling together. Inhaling, bringing the arms up, interlacing the fingers and exhale now through your mouth, lengthening the spine, inhaling again, exhale through the nose, now hold the breath, inhale, 
chain to the chest one hold the breath belly in two mula bandha lift on the pelvic floor three four and exhale bring the hands forward and round the spine inhale bring your arms all the way up and exhale go to the right side inhale arms to center exhale to the other side remember what i said in the beginning you're more than welcome to stay longer okay inhaling center moving with the breath exhaling separate the hands and circle a little bit your wrist circle circle and the other direction maybe a little bit of movements on the wrist bring the hands into the shoulders inhaling circle your elbows forward again opening the lungs big circles if possible fulfilling the lungs with new prana and then smaller circles and backward just opening the joints a little bit especially if you work on the computer typing this will feel amazing and then release and let's put the block on the side you're going to grab uh, the back of the chair and you're going to just work your legs I also going to use a belt so if you don't have a belt a towel so uh, again grab the back of the chair and this is also good for if you travel a lot and <laughs> many hours in the plane you know inhale right leg to your chest exhale extend breathing breathe out inhaling exhale and you can do five three whatever time you have available sometimes in the companies we don't have that much time so make a little shorter then put a belt or you can also grab your feet or your calf okay and then let's grab the belt in that case grab the chair with the back hand and then just to stretch your leg keep your chest up lift and bring your left foot under your left knee take a few breaths here again if you feel a little more flexible grab your feet some folks will be you know not too high and again some others will be very high all the way up okay now let's release that but maybe moving the ankle back and forth doing some ankle rotations back forth circle up and release and let's repeat with the other leg I'm going to grab the back of the chair and I'm going to bring the left knee to the chest inhale exhale one breathing breathe out working with the soles hip flexor and also working your abs inhale exhale this is a chair workout <laughs> shoulders back and then whenever you're ready you can use the belt or you can grab look interlacing the fingers in the back of your calf muscles both hands or maybe one hand and grabbing the chair in the back or like I show you previously you can use the belt and do a little bit more mild the most important of all yoga is that connection with the breath that will allow you to become one unified with your body mind and soul okay after that release and um, we can let me turn the chair this way again so you can actually this way so you can see me so now we're going to do a twist you can bring the block again if you like or without the block keep your feet nice and grounded inhale bring your left hand up grab the back of the chair inhale right hand up grab your left knee with your right inhale lift up your chest and exhale twist 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 and you can actually go really deep into this twist on the chair don't forget to hold it for five or more breaths 
is an inhale and I exhale maybe going a little bit deeper four breathing slowly closing your eyes and five inhale bring the arms all the way up and exhale in let's switch sides so again I'm going to grab the back of the chair and the left hand on my right knee inhale I lift up my chest and exhale I twist 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 and do it again lift the crown of the head up remember to sit on the edge of the chair and exhale trying to twist a little bit more you probably can see some other wrinkles on my shirt inhale and now we hold it for five raising slowly and then four making a sound breathing through the nose close your eyes three two and one very nice inhaling arms go up we can talk about the benefits another time exhale release the hands um, but basically every time that you twist you're going to energize the spines energize the body and now let's do the quadriceps the front of the leg so you can stay in your chair as you like I'm just going to flip my chair around so you can see different angles so now I'm in sitting on the chair I'm going to open my left leg to the left side if you are a little bit short you can put a block under the front feet I grab the back of the chair and then I'm going to stretch my right quadriceps so I bend my right knee just like at the runner's lounge after I run you just grab your right ankle with your right hand and then bring your right foot to your glutes and stretch the front of your right leg don't stick your tailbone out keep your tailbone in and left foot under the left knee for five close your eyes four three breathing deeply two and one release bring yourself to the center we can do uttanasana the forward bend here in between sides inhaling arms up again this is great even for uh, prenatal because they have room for the belly you can put a block and just bend forward so I inhale and exhaling I grab my elbows I put the forehead there and I just melt away so I am on the edge of the chair I'm grabbing my elbows and I'm just bending forward maybe a little lower here you want the head to kind of hang as well that way you can stretch the vertebras, neck, and all that. Sometimes I like to bounce from one side to another, you know. And then to come out, you can rise or maybe help yourself. Bring the hands into the knees, especially if you're a senior or you're working with seniors, then they might need a little bit of a help to come out okay now let's switch to the other side grab the back of the chair what I say before is like if you have someone that is a little short maybe the chair is a little too tall then they can put the feet on the block so you basically lift the floor for them and um, grab that left ankle go on the edge of the chair and just stretch the front of your left quadriceps breathing and breathe out tuck in the tail belly in one more inhale and exhale so slowly releasing here bring yourself to center you can bring the block again to between the legs if you have a block if you don't have a block just really nice and ground your feet we're going to do the arms now so definitely you want to have a belt if you don't have a belt you will use a t-shirt a towel or anything like that for those that are in the teacher training you will bring the props whenever you go especially to teach 
a corporate group, you know, you will go all prepared. So you will have belts. <laughs> so, okay. Let me turn the chair again because you want to see my arms. So this is Gomukhasana arms. So I'm going to sit on the edge of the chair. And uh, let's say you don't have belts, you forgot the belt. Okay, inhaling arms up. Exhaling, bring the hands back, grab the elbows. You can make a reverse prayer, connecting the fingers and crossing the thumbs here. You can also do the full Gomukhasana, so you will grab a belt, inhale, bring the right arm up, and then bending the right elbow, and then the left hand goes behind and connects with the belt. And so this opening of the arms is super important for those that work in offices. I mean, for everyone, but if you again type in for four or five hours a day, then you will definitely feel those shoulders rounding forward and doing incorrect posture. And then after a few breaths, you're going to release and you can do what I call a belly dance movement. You release and maybe look, <laughs> my belly dance movement, you know, because you're going to feel all the marma open, all that heat of the blood of these energetic points. And then the same thing on the other side. So inhaling arms up, let's say I don't need the belt, so you can bend the elbow to go in the back. I like to grab it sometimes like these guys, look. And this can be another way. Maybe you forgot the belt to stay here. Maybe kind of like open, open, open more the left arm. And after you do a little bit of these movements, guess what happened? You can bring the hand back and boom, you can connect the fingers and then you breathe there for five maybe lean the head into that elbow that is up to open more the shoulder three so go mukasana go is cow muka face asana posture i guess i have a cow face right now <laughs> And then after a few breaths, oh my God, feel those marmas, let the energy run and slowly release. Okay, so this is uh, part one of our chair class. We're going to do the warriors now. So let's get ready. Let's get ready for the warriors. So from the chair, you're going to just open one leg to the side, I will start with my right leg, I open to the side and I grab the back of the chair and then I just move my back leg straight for warrior one. Notice that I'm going to lift the back heel so I can really move my left hip forward. I want my right foot under my right knee and then the arms up. And you're going to hold here for five breaths. And if you are a little bit short, you can also bring the block under your right foot. And if you have an open pelvis, you can also bring your back heel in the ground, but that would be a little bit more challenge perhaps. And then after five breaths, we go to warrior two. So I release my arms, I grab the chair, and I will bring this pelvis back. And I will try to align the right heel to the left arc of my left foot. And now, Vidabhadrasana B, we open the pelvis. And it's five breaths here, opening the chest, opening the arms, you can look to your right fingers, I mean the right knee bend here. If you have neck pain, then you can just keep the neck neutral without turning. And you will always hear me in class to close the eyes for a moment to go with him. Parjva Konasana, bringing the right elbow on the right knee and moving the left arm forward. Again, those asanas here are very traditional, but at the same time we're doing clearly a conservative uh, variation of that. Remember, you're working with a special category, very much beginners, very much stiff, people that 
you know, work too much and they don't stretch so often. And so you gotta take it easy, yeah? And you bring the knees together to center. And maybe take a few breaths here. Another beautiful pranayama that you can blend with the asanas anytime you like is that Nadi Sodana or alternate nostrils breathing. So I put my left hand in mudra on top of my left leg. The right hand is going to be like a hungi loose. And I cover the right nostril. Exhaling through the left side. Inhale through my left. Cover my left. And exhale through the right. Inhale, right side, cover the right, and exhale through the left. Inhaling, arms up, exhaling, arms down. Now I did just a sample, I'm just giving you an example what could you do and between the asanas, so please feel welcome to do longer. Let's switch legs. I'm going to open my left leg and I'm going to hold the chair. I'm going to go on the edge of the chair and my right leg will be straight. Right leg straight, left leg bend, and arms up. Okay? And if you have more opening on your pelvis, so you don't want to be quirky like this. You want to bring your right hip forward. And that's why my heel is off the ground, but if you're more open in your pelvis, then you can bring your feet on the floor. Don't forget to breathe. Right leg straight, left leg bend. Variations, maybe in interlacing the fingers, look into a back bend here. Okay, on the arms, you can bring the arms to the side and back, grabbing the thumbs. Or just traditional and in the traditional you can also look up to the fingers or keep it neutral so choose whatever you like to do and now let's go to Virabhadrasana B so I'm going to open my right leg a little bit more I'm going to align my heels I'm still using the chair and if you feel like your students are a little more advanced you can start with the chair and you can say things like well if you can get off the chair that's great too, right? But we are using the chair on this class. Again, prenatal obesity, you came out from a heavy injury and the chair will just give you support, okay? Don't drop the arm in the back, be sure the arms are in one line. And then when you're ready, bring that elbow onto the front knee and the other hand will go forward and you make a beautiful line, don't curve the body, keep opening the chest like that so and it's going to be those five breaths, we're only doing three in this class for uh, the teaching methodology of it but you're more than welcome to do more than five okay, I'm doing a mudra with my hand you can do a chin, a chin mudra or mushti mudra grabbing the thumb and then after five you come back and then bring the legs together. Again, inhaling arms up and exhaling arms down, always moving with the breath. Let's get up of the chair and do our chair dance. <laughs> so you grab the chair and you bring in front of you like this. And now we're going to do the Cobra Bhujangasana. I'm going to grab the sides of the chair. I'm going to walk back. And then inhale and exhale, bring your body forward, forward until your shoulders go back, go back, look up. And this is Bhujangasana on the chair. Let the head give you more opening. Shoulders back. Don't forget to breathe. And then slowly you return. Okay, you can turn the chair this way to counterweight and stretch the spine. So now you grab again the sides of the chair for downward facing dog. You walk back, inhaling, 
and exhaling you're just lengthening okay this is really good also for seniors that maybe have um, their wrist a little bit sensitive because downward dog on the wrist can be maybe too much so with this way you got the V shape, you stretch in the back of the legs, you're lengthening the spine, and um, again, a little bit more conservative. So after three or five breaths, you come up, and now we're going to turn the chair again. <laughs> and you can do another cabra, you can do another downward dog with the chair if you like. So now we're going to do the warrior three, for that, we'll use a blanket, a blanket or a towel. So let me grab a blanket here. Boom. I'm going to put the blanket here in the top of the chair just because this metal is not very comfortable on the skin. So you want to just lots of cushion, lots of protection, lots of love. I will bring the elbows into the chair. Be sure the chair is always on the sticky mat, by the way, because if you put it chair maybe in a marble floor wood floors boom the chair will slip away so this is your a security measure I'm going to put my elbows on the chair namaste prayer mudra I walk back and then one leg at the time right leg will go up you know, lowering your right hip if you don't have it neck pain you can look at your fingers if you have neck pain look down and you're making like a t shape here three five breaths long with ujjayi sound and then you release if you feel like your students are shaking let's say you have someone that is 80 maybe their legs are going to be something like this not too high okay and don't keep them longer there and then otherwise you can again do it low longer this is also good for prenatal because their belly is free of compression and you have the chair to help with the balance and slowly you return let's put the blanket on the side and let's turn the chair again towards us so I will turn here the chair and I will this time spread my legs wide like Prasarita Padottanasana. Inhale, I bring the arms all the way up and exhale, I bend forward. Let me move the chair a little forward. Actually, you can grab the back of the chair and put the forehead in there. Now my chair has a cushion. I don't know if you can see with the camera, but if you don't have cushion, you bring the cushion and that's how you will do. You will put another blanket to make a nice, right? You don't want to put your skin in a metal cold part. So let's do it again. Inhale, look up and exhale. I grab the back of the chair and my forehead will be on the chair. And then I close my eyes. And this is our Prasarita. Padottanasana with a chair and it feels amazing trying to lock the knees you're going to feel the opening on the entire spine another variation is grabbing the elbows that's another little way and every time that you bring your forehead into a surface is almost an invitation to let go and relax Okay, so don't fall asleep in there. <laughs> Three or five breaths. Again, when you're real time teaching, it would be longer, like I said, maybe more than five breaths, okay? So just take that in consideration. And we can also do a twist. I'm going to bring my chair a little closer, so the elbow is going to be under the shoulder, so maybe open the legs wide to create more space. And then put the right elbow, on the chair make the L shape 90 degrees and then inhale bringing the left arm up so you're still doing the prasarita with the legs legs wide open and then you do a twist breathing looking up maybe even 
if you want to do more advanced grabbing the leg but this will be plenty for everyone again you can do this in an office with prenatal with seniors and it's really yummy unless always switch sides left elbow gotta be under the left left shoulder and as you inhale you bring the right arm up 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 and then after your three five breaths you release and uh, let's do one more here put the blanket on the side now i'm going to put the chair now i am using a yoga mat so the chair will be on the edge of the yoga mat again as the wall okay for triangle and for ardha chandrasana so come to the wall so this is also very good for seniors sometimes they are taking some medications and they have some vertigo if you are pregnant you also might experience vertigo because you're just off your balance you have to carry with the weight of another baby and just using the wall on the chair is just great because it does give you a lot of security and safety okay so now let's start with the right leg i'm going to open the right leg just like utita trikonasana and uh, you want to engage your right knee up so instead of releasing my right knee i'm going to contract all my right quadriceps up and then open the arms inhale and exhale you're going to lean forward lengthening the spine so it has an opening here grab the chair and put it almost touching the skin of your leg and then level one will have the right hand or the hand on the chair and the other hand up so you can always start slowly and then deeper would be when you bring your right elbow on the chair and that will be way deeper and then i will show the adjustments later you won't put one hand on the left hip the other hand on the left shoulder joint and push the students against the wall and it feels quite amazing okay so after your five breaths here you inhale you come up and you go to the um, half moon for half moon instead of having the chair so close you will need to move the chair forward away from you and to enter you're going to bend the knee not to pull your hamstrings because if you pull the hamstring it takes forever to get healed all right so lean forward find the chair and then bring that back leg up <laughs> and then you want to make this kind of shape right so i'm not going anywhere the, the wall has me and then you can open and rotate one hip on top of the other this is the ardha chandrasana motion and release lower back pain sciatic pain and if you want more you can bring again your right elbow on the chair really really deep don't forget to use the breath as a tool to go deeper in all the poses and always find meditation in the asanas to come out you bend the front leg the right and then as you bend you can drop the other and then push the hand into the chair and then beautifully come on up okay well we're going to do the other side now or you can repeat i just want to show you an enhancement with the block so what happens for example myself i have over extension of my knee so you will see that my knee is going back but if i bend a little i put the block on this and an angle here and i push now the block would be like um, a break or a reminder to engage more on my right knee and don't let my knee go negative angle because with time that will wear off my joint right and so putita trikonasana inhale exhale four 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 and then you bring the right hand down and then look up so now we're going to just move the chair to the other side so we can repeat the same poses in the other leg 
very simple. Again, you want to have your legs apart, basically the height of one of your legs, so not too, too wide, not too close. And then we're going to open, in this case now, the left foot. And remember what I said, if your knee is going to the other side, like I'm doing right now, it's a negative angle that with the years, even though I don't feel anything, with the years it can be damaging your joints. So I will place the block here and with my calf muscles in an angle, I will kind of like remind myself not to do that, okay? Then we'll, for Utita Trikonasana, for the triangle pose, I will bring the, the chair almost touching my skin. And then, always with the vinyasa flow, inhaling and exhaling, lengthening forward. I bring the left hand on the chair, be sure that your hand is on the same line than the shoulder, and the right hand up. And the wall is there to support, and it's great. Okay, if you want a little bit more, you can bring the elbow into the chair. So I will slowly bring the elbow there. I gotta adjust myself here. And then boom, so good. We stay here for five breaths. Breathing deeply through the nose, lengthening the spine. You're making your ankles strong, stretching the calf muscles here, the back. And always trying to turn your mind into your sensations. So that deep breath and closing the eyes can be really helpful to disconnect the mind. Okay, so we apply technique to go deeper in our meditation practice and in the next inhale push the left hand into the chair and rise up and exhale release. Ardha Chandrasana is a balanced asana and it opens the pelvis and it's good to release lower back pain. We're not going to use the block now. I'm going to maybe step a little further and to enter the asana we'll bend the knee not to pull the hamstring. So inhale, bending the front leg, I place my hand on the chair, this leg goes up, and I use the wall. So this is level one. We want this right hip to rotate and flip in top of the left. And if you want more, the elbow goes on the chair, and boom. And I will make another video with the adjustments here. But as long as you put the props correctly, that would be the best adjustment for this style of yoga. Uh, encouraging that deep breath through the nose. You can look at the fingers, you can keep the neck neutral. And whenever you feel satisfied after your five or three long breaths, whatever time you have available there, and you're going to bend the knee to come out, not to pull the hamstring. So when you bend, it's like a safe precaution, and then hand on the chair, and slowly come back here, okay? All right, so now, pigeon pose on the chair. Kapotanasana on the chair. We're going to put the chair. You see, that's why I have this cross mat like this because we move so much with the chair and the mat that it's already good to have two mats if possible. Otherwise, it can be a little, you know, when you gotta move the mat. So just set your students like this. Again, it's the wall with two mats, all the props around. Okay? So I'm going to first film giving you my back <laughs> and then I will turn the camera and you can see the side of the asana. I will bring the chair close to the wall and for this one we're going to use a bolster. So I will put the bolster on top of the chair like this 
okay? You can also use a block for your heels. So let's start maybe with uh, a block here, okay? So I will come in front of the chair, yeah? I place my hands on the walls like a support. Let's say start with my right leg bend, Kapotanasana, one leg bend, one leg straight, pigeon pose. I bend my right leg and I put on top of this big pillow, this bolster, I bring my left foot back until I can reach the heel with the block. Again, the hands go up in the wall, inhale, look up, and exhale, I bend forward, and you can even bring your your forehead. We're going to continue showing you how to do Kapotanasana with a chair and a wall. Now we have a little bit of a different angle. So I'm using a sticky mat and the chair is on top of the mat, not too slight, as you know, using the wall. We have a bolster on top of the chair. If you don't have a bolster, what you can use is a few blankets, folder like a rectangle. Okay, so any blanket that is not too soft. And the block is an enhancement, I will say. You can do it with or without the block. So let's start again. So I'm going to face the wall in the chair. I'm going to come close here. And uh, I'm going to place my hands into the wall. Let's start with the right leg. So. Kapotanasa, one leg bend, one leg straight. I'm going to bring my left leg back until I find that block on my heel. I wiggle my right foot a little forward, inhale, look up, and exhale, I bend forward and I relax here. Okay, so this is Kapotanasana, pigeon pose with block, bolster, chair and wall. So what's happening here, one of the contraindications of the Kapotanasana on the floor is be careful, you know, being careful with the knees, with the compression of the knee joint, if you have knee pain or anything on your tendons and ligaments, it can be a little bit dangerous, but in this case, my right knee here is bent in top of a very fluffy pillow, very comfortable, and is, on, is not being compressed by anything. Okay, to come out, bring the hands on the wall, inhale, lift up your chest, and then slowly release. Okay, let's try the other leg without the block for a change, so I usually let the students know that that can be add or remove. And another thing, uh, if you're too short or you're too long, if you want to, you know, stretch more or less, you can measure that and you can put more high or less high. So the more that you put, the more you will open, right? And again, the leg will be the knees will be protected, but will not be, you know, you don't put your, all your chest, all your weight into your knee, and that really makes a huge difference. So I, here I come again, facing the wall with the chair, inhaling arms up, exhaling hands to the wall, then this time is the left leg bent on top of the bolster and the blanket, and then I will wiggle my right leg back so I can have a nice stretch, Inhale, I look up, stretching the arms, and exhaling, I release my forehead on the wall. And let me see if I can put my, oh, there you go, I can put my right heel down. So again, using the block on your back heel or pushing your heel down is actually working my calf muscles a little bit more here. And, I am pretty open on my pelvis, so using the blanket in top of the bolster is actually is working better for me. Sometimes you can even use two bolsters. I'm not using two bolsters just because not everyone has two bolsters at home. But if you teach in a, in a yoga school, they should have plenty to come out, put the hands, push into the wall, 
and release. <laughs> okay, well that was Kapotanasana, pigeon on the wall and in the chair. Let's continue. Brava Jasana is a twist. I'm going to put the chair this way now. And you can also use a block here. So, actually, let me switch to the other side. I think you will take a look better. Boom, like this. So, the block again, it can be an enhancement, almost like high heels, like if I am, you know. So this is another twist. So the leg that is closer to the wall is the one go up in the chair. All right, so let's maybe put the outside leg on my high heels, working my calf muscles, and then the left leg will go on the chair. Okay, let's go a little bit closer to the wall here. You don't need to touch the wall, but you don't wanna to be too away from the wall. Now, inhaling, left arm up, Exhale, bend your elbow like 90 degrees. Inhale, right hand up and exhale into the wall. Inhale, lift your chest and exhale, twist, 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 and twist, twist, and twist. Inhale and exhale, twist, 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 twist. Very much deep. Keep your knee under your ankle. Keep your other leg really engaged. Close your eyes. Twists are great to avoid depression, to energize your body, and it's a great way to detox. So definitely add lots of twists. People will feel the effects afterwards. And then after three or five breaths, whatever time you have available there, you will slowly return, inhaling, and then exhaling, just using the hand on the wall, just slowly come out. Okay, again, this is all based on the wonderful teachings of uh, Master Iyengar and you can find a certified Iyengar teacher if you want to get more information about this or of course read all his books. Continue with Bravajasana. Once again, I'm going to just turn the chair to the other side. I just changed the angle for you guys can see better. And um, the leg that is close to the wall is the one goes up in the chair and the block on the leg that is in the bottom is optional. I personally like it because it works my calves but you can do it either way. Okay, so once you're here, be sure that the feet is not here, the feet is not there, you wanna have this 90 degrees, the ankle under the knee and do vinyasa flow with the breath. Inhale, left arm up, exhale, bend, inhale, right arm up, find the wall, exhale, 90 degrees, make this like cactus arms, inhale, and exhale, twist, 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 and twist. And you can stay there for three, five breaths, trying to keep your elbows and shoulders in the same line. And don't, don't collapse your body completely into the wall because you can get off a, a, a line in here, just trying to use the hands to twist the torso. Okay, don't forget to breathe everyone. And then when you're ready, you're gonna slowly release. And to switch sides, it's very much simple. You just turn the chair to the other side. So again, people that are in the offices for many, many hours, very much tense, stiff, you know, the stress will travel into your mu muscles and fibers and we want to create an environment of peace and healing to everyone. So now I'm going to use the block again because I found a very nice on my calf. Look how my calf is already activated just because of that. Then I bring this leg into the chair, the one that is close to the wall goes on the chair. Inhale, right arm up and bend 90 degrees. Inhale, left arm up and then bend. And then with the arms I will twist. Inhale, twist. Inhale and on the exhale, twist. A little bit more. Oh, a little bit more. So maybe dropping the coffee 
and twisting more. <laughs> and that would be a new campaign. And can you slowly return and release? Okay. So part of this uh, chair yoga has some asanas in the wall that I usually do. But I will skip that today just for the uh, practice of the class. Usually we do um, three pose on the wall. We also do downward dog on the wall. And we can do Virabhadrasana C on the walls. Has a, a flow, has a sequence, right? Let's continue with the, specifically with the chair. So let's go ahead and do one of the most popular, I call <laughs> the winner. <laughs> Not to be judgmental, but this is very much popular. So this is Supta Kapotanasana with the chair. So I will turn the chair into the mat like this. So be sure that you put the right side because sometimes you put the wrong side and then it closes. So it needs to be this way. Boom. Okay. Then we'll use a bolster as your back. We can use a blanket as a pillow. So honestly, if you have an old bolster, it tends to sink a little bit here and then the person rounds the spine. So you will need to watch the students, watch what's happening and sometimes a blanket will go even there to lift the chest. Okay, so actually let's go ahead and do that. And then um, you can also put a blanket as the pillow for the neck. And we can use one or two blocks for this one here. Let's uh, use everything <laughs> for the sake of the class. So I will come here, I will sit in Bada Konasana, right? Bringing the soles of the feet together. And uh, this is already a beautiful asana here. So yummy. We'll get a belt. You'll put the belt around your waist. So be sure you close the belt. Sometimes in this restorative world, we get really trapped with the props. Be patient. I will show you even how to close the belt. You know, that was challenging for me in the beginning from Ashtanga Vinyasa being super fast paced with zero props to have <laughs> so many props and a must more passive environment. So here is the bucket. Usually those are the good belts with two metal buckets like this. You put the belt around the two rings and then around one ring. And that's it. Boom, you close it. Then it will be really low on your lower back and around your toes. Once you have that, then you squeeze the belt. The belt is going to be almost like a massage on your lower back. Yeah, so why not? Be sure that the belt is really low in your lower back. It's not on, you know, on your waistline or it's still in the thoracic spine, but really low. Then another detail here, you know, we have this metal bucket here and this is this one is thin, but some are thick. And you don't want the metal to be touching the skin. So you want to move the bucket, the belt, the ring, <laughs> right on this space between the legs. As you know, I'm pretty flexible. Most people are not, especially our seniors. Their knees will be here. And so the blocks will be right there, right? Giving them the support hopefully a little bit less. So you accommodate the block can be vertical, horizontal, okay? And if the person has even more opening on the pelvis, meaning the knees are a little more towards the floor, you will open up a blanket like this, again, like a bigger rectangle, right? And then you will make a vegan sushi with it. And you roll it up. Roll it up. Here's my vegan sushi. Lots of avocado, celery, even mango. And then 
I will say either way or the block or the blanket you will put the blanket in top of your feet and under your ankles okay so that's another way I don't think it's necessary to use both so you will use your judgment watching the students and see what's more appropriate you know watch the body does the knees are too high put blocks the knees are not too high you can make very nice like this and then bring the hands behind inhale lifting the chest and exhaling you just lean on this bolster and it's great it's basically what I call the yoga couch I mean it's great you can bring the arms up above the head grabbing the elbows and when you do that you literally open the lungs more you know you create more lung elasticity here breathing into the heart center stretching the pectoral muscles as your arms are up opening the pelvis as the knees fall to the side you will slightly stretch your abs so it's a good pose to do after a big meal instead of taking a nap like you know if you got too heavy after your lunch you can just take this asana now the blocks guys can even make that perfect and handsome you can put the blocks on your forearms like this and then as one of my teachers says go to your favorite galaxy disconnect and breathe okay so this is almost supta Bada Konasana Supta is reclining on the floor. You can see I'm not really reclining. The chair is very high. This was always going to be recommended if you have heart operation. If you open your heart open and you have some scarf tissue or if you have a recent operation in your heart, then this will be more appropriate to you than lay down completely and um, get your heart you know surrounded by blood like a flood of blood so this would be a little bit more safe and i cannot stay on the pose look at that i'm immediately relaxing so this is one of these aspects of this um restorative yoga because they're meant for us to do take a nap and completely relax and let go and when that happens, right, when this uh, sympathetic system will kick in, is the time where the body will stop the flight or fight mode, will stay, will relax, will restore, will surrender, and will recharge. So if I stop talking, I will definitely get so, 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 so relaxed. And in that relaxation is when my body is restoring, is building my immune system. So, you know, very important for those that want healing, build your immune system, right? Okay, to come out, I bring my hands on the floor and I will try to push into my hands and uniformly or evenly lift up the chest, inhaling exhaling let's remove the props so we'll put the blanks on the side we'll remove the belt and then maybe just giving yourself a hug grab your knees and release that pose okay so i hope you're enjoying this part um, we're going to continue now with the inversions on this other part of the class. Okay, everyone, namaste. Again, continue with our chair yoga class. We're going to be doing a headstand using two chairs in top of, very important, the sticky mat or the yoga mat. Otherwise, you can have a terrible accident if you don't have the mat okay so that's very important the chest can slide and you can fall off your neck oh my god let's don't do that so don't forget the chair must be on top of the yoga mat okay 
Then I have two blankets in top of the chair because most of the chairs are with some metal frame and we want to give each other some cushion. So as you know, the cervical spine, your neck is made of vertebras and they're relatively small compared with all the weight if you go in an inversion and put your entire body into your cervical spine. So the way to do a secure headstand sirshasana on the mat will be grabbing the elbows, making this triangle shape frame, that will be the base, then the crown of the head is here, then when that happens, you should be able to put so much weight into your elbows that the crown of the head is like an inch off the floor. So that way you don't compress the cervical spine. Because when you do compression here, you can actually, if you do it a lot of times, you can hurt the neck. You can develop some type of hernia disc or things like that. Okay, so that's what we don't want. Now, if you already have neck pain, or like me in the beginning, like I said, I did a lot of Ashtanga Vinyasa on my first five years of yoga life, and I love it, but of course, <laughs> smashing my neck on the floor so many years, so many times, my neck is fine, but I do have some hernia discs that I need to watch. So when I do shoulder stand or head stand, I need to be very conscious of the movement. Now, inside your brain, we have this wonderful pineal gland, which is the door of enlightenment, I will say, the portal for heaven on earth. And it's right there, my friends, it's already in your brain. When you do these inversions, and if you can stay longer time without hurting your body, you will definitely start activating this, this important gland, the mama of all glands, balances all your hormones and gives you this capacity of see the spiritual world. So let's get into the asana. So when, of course, if you're a teacher, if you're a teacher and you have a student here, you will be holding the chair, you will be near them. Sometimes, again, I will show the adjustments later. You need someone to like help to lift the legs. I usually don't do this with seniors unless there are yogis from many, many years and other seniors, but they have, of course, some physical condition, you know? So maybe just a private. In the group set, it can be tricky. So we'll talk more about that in private, but let me show ahead and I'm sorry, I will get in, we're giving you my back here. But look guys, so first I will measure if my head actually fits in between the chairs. I think it's a little bit too close. So I will move chair a little bit. You gotta fit my head, right? <laughs> in between the chairs. Look at my hand position. I'm going to grab the outside of the chair. That goes my head. Hope you can hear me okay. So my shoulders are on the chair and then you can bring one leg at a time, boom, find the wall, then the other leg, and then legs straight, okay? Yay, can you see me okay? Can you hear me okay? I feel great. It's actually a super nice massage in your shoulders, in your clavicle. It's just so good, guys. And what I was trying to say before, you can stay a long time here. Why? Because there's no compression on your cervical spine, there's no compression in your neck. And it's actually it's opening everything using the gravity. And again, never let go of the chair, be sure that the chair is nice and firm. You can even get off the wall, but we don't really get off the wall, but you could, look. But for safety reasons, we'll just stay here. Yeah, you don't need to balance. All we want to do is actually meditate here. Take, take the time to find the breath, close the eyes, and stay maybe a little longer that you will stay on your regular 
Sirshasana practice on the floor. So let me do that again, okay? Let go, me go up. She loves to show off. To come out, I bring one knee to my chest and that will find the floor. Here it goes, boom. Now I can bring the other leg. Control it slowly. And then I turn my hands like this and then I come out. Voila! <laughs> okay, well, let me clean myself here. So that was the Sirshasana with the two chairs. Completely safe for the neck. Very good for meditation to open your pineal gland, like I was mentioning. You can read so much about the pineal gland, right? That we have our um, nectar there waiting to <laughs> give you the vision. Um, but one thing that I must say, you know, we always need to study what is the benefit and what is the caution. Here the caution is if you have some type of eye alignment like maybe glaucoma, right? Because yes, if you stay longer, all the blood in the body goes to your head, goes to your eyes and maybe that is too much, okay? So just a little note there, if you have something happening with your eyes, just don't hold it for too long. All right, so thank you. We're going to move to our next asana, which is Salamba Sarvangasana. Namaste, everyone. Okay, so we're in the almost the last part of our chair yoga class. Um, now we're doing Salamba Sarvangasana or shoulder stand using chair, mat, wall, bolster, blanket, all this stuff. So let's go ahead and do it. Okay, so to start, I'm going to come to the side of the chair. I have these blankets here because I will put my lower back in there. One thing that works sometimes even better than the blanket is just another yoga mat. But the ones that I have are super thick, that will be too much. So if you have a thin yoga mat, you just fold it and you can place it. I'm going to use blankets today. Okay, now I'm going to sit on the side of it, like that, so. I will wring the legs around the chair, so you need to have a space with the back of the chair and the wall, so your knees can go in there. And again, when we're teaching this, usually the teacher will be here with the student, maybe holding the chair so the chair doesn't shake around and gives the student insecurity. You really want to be aware because you're using a lot of stuff, yeah? So let's continue. I bring my knee over the chair and then the other one, like that. I'm holding the chair. Now I will bring the leg up into the wall and I will definitely hold the chair as I start dropping my body down. So I'm still holding the chair, I'm still holding the chair, I'm still holding the chair. I'm still holding the chair and now we want the bolster to be in my shoulders and my head to be on the floor. That's right. All right, so now I bring my hands inside the chair and I grab the back of the chair. So this is it guys, shoulder stand with a chair and the bolster to support the shoulders. And the neck is again completely free of compression. My neck is completely safe. And guess what? I can be here five minutes or even more. <laughs> really working that circulation system, improving blood circulation. Great for tired legs, fatigue on the legs, varicose veins and you can stay as long as you like be sure that the chair is on the mat that's super important the chair cannot slide now this other chair is for the halasana and that's not on the mat because you will see i will kick that later but let's go to halasana so i bring one leg on the chair then i bring the other leg on the chair 
So that's my halasana right there. You see how that chair is light a little? I wanted that to happen. And then you stay here, squeezing the arms in, engaging the legs. Um, a lot of beginners, when we do a regular Salambo Sarvangasana and Halasana, they have short hamstrings, so they cannot bring the feet on the, on the floor. That's why you need to lift the floor, bring in a block, bring in a bolster. In this case, we have a chair. Okay, then we go back into the wall. Again, I'm doing a little bit fast here for the teaching practice. You can do it very much slow when you're going to do this, okay guys? And then I will, let's do this, let me kick the chair. <laughs> That's what I wanted. And then look, I'm just going to let go of my hands. It's the scary and fun part. And I'm going to slide. I'm going to slide and slide and slide. And that's it. Okay, so this is where you end it. Which can be our Shavasana part. And so, okay, knees to the chest, hands on the floor roll to the side <laughs> that was the salamba servangasana usually i put another mat and then the teacher will come and maybe move the chair for the halasana portion but because i didn't have my second partner here i will just kick with my legs okay so salamba servangasana with the chair blankets so again, these blankets can be replaced by a sticky mat. The bolster will be right here because the your shoulders will be on the bolster and your head will be on the floor. And I mean, again, the idea is for you to be able to sit on these asanas, to stay on these poses for a for long, long time. And finally, the shavasana with the chair will be something similar as we just came off the Salambo Sarvagasana. So you can have a blanket has a pillow, boom, like this, fold in like a square. I will make my pillow if you have lower back pain. Why not keep that bolster there, okay? So you can do with the bolster or without. And you just basically lay down with the legs up into the chair you can lock your feet to the side and just like that just like that just like that okay this is this is good <laughs> so your shavasana can keep your legs elevated using a chair just doing that already is releasing uh, some of the lower back compression as well. So it's release lower back pain and helps the tire legs like I mentioned before. And it's very soothing, very relaxing. Okay, my friends, I can't stay too long because I do get too relaxed. <laughs> And then to come out, bring the knees to the chest, open the arm, you want to roll, roll to that side and then you will sit on the bolster or in the blanket, you will do your close prayers and namaste. Thank you for watching, uh, don't forget to subscribe the YouTube channel that really helps me to keep going with more classes. If you're in the teacher training, I will be uh, checking your performance in, in class and uh, I will also be asking you some videos for you to perform these asanas and anything that you want to know more, just feel welcome to send me a message, okay? Have a beautiful day. Thank you for being here.